Hey Art Nerds! Today we're going to do a watercolor illustration of cherry blossoms. This is an edigame watercolor project. Edigame is a really fun, fairly simple way to handle watercolor. The materials you're going to need for this are pretty simple. And I have the reference image that I use. This photo was actually taken by Joseph, not by me. So it was a very loose sort of interpretation of the subject matter rather than a very structured interpretation. But the materials you're going to need for this project are really very simple. And if you don't have them at home, I'll have them linked down in the description below. This is a great sort of beginner watercolor project. So if you're kind of new to watercolor, if you're just kind of finding your feet, or if you're looking to say entertain your kids or entertain family members with a project, this could be a great project for you. So edigame differs from western style watercolor. I'm going to go through the materials with you guys first and then explain that in a little bit. So you're going to need some sumi brushes. Uh, you can pick them up at your local art supply store if it is open. You can also order them online. Again, there'll be a link down in the description below. Most of the brushes I have are rounds. We have goat and we have weasel. You're also going to want to have a mixing surface. You don't have to have a plastic watercolor uh, palette. A plate would work. I'm going to be using the Mozart Como Rebbe watercolor set, but any Gansai style watercolors like the Akashiya Gansai or the Kuratake Gansai will work for this. You're also going to want some edigame postcards or watercolor paper. I'm going to be using some white gouache. I have a pencil for sketching, a couple of Pintel pigment brush pins for inking later on in the piece. I have a pad, a Canton XL watercolor paper, but we're not using it for the paper inside. We're actually using it for the chipboard on the back. You can see some of the paint has already layered on the back. And you're going to want some washi tape. So the first thing I want to do is I want to use my washi tape to kind of adhere my edigame postcard to my chipboard. So there are lots of different types of edigame postcards and edigame paper. What is generally common is that they have a layer of gassin or washi paper affixed to something that provides a bit more structural support. So like cardstock. So this paper handles very, very differently from Western style watercolor paper. But if you don't have edigame paper and you don't feel like ordering edigame paper, you can do this on cellulose based watercolor papers like the Canson XL. You're just going to need to have to adjust your technique just a little bit. It's not going to be as prone to blending as the edigame postcards will be. So the first thing I do is I'm applying the washi tape to the underside of my arm. That's to remove some of the excess tack. Then I'm going to double roll it and apply it to the back of my postcard. So once you've got your paper adhered to your chipboard, you're going to want to start sketching. I'm using a harder lead for this, so I'm using an H lead and a mechanical pencil to sketch this. When it comes to edigame, not everybody sketches it first. There's a beautiful element of sort of loose painting, of loose sketching while you paint. But for me, I really wanted something a little bit tighter than that. So really, either way works for you is best if you want the safety net of having a sketch. If you're not as confident in your mark making skills or if you just don't know Chinese uh, and sumie watercolor painting if you don't understand the brushwork used for that going in with a sketch first can be really helpful so for my flower sketches I basically start out with circular shapes first and then subdivide that into the individual petals if you look at the reference image cherry blossoms have five petals and they're kind of oblong in shape coming to a teardrop point as they enter into the flower itself. And I really like the fan shape on some of these flowers, so I really wanted to keep that in. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, this isn't a straight referenced photo. I did reference it a lot, but I'm not just copying what I'm seeing. And that's because there were certain shapes I really wanted to make sure I captured. And I also wanted to simplify the form so that they were easier to understand.
So you guys can see that um, this isn't a particularly detailed sketch. I didn't do a lot of rendering. I really just wanted to kind of capture the basic forms because I want my watercolor and my inks to further define it. So I want to start by painting in the background. I'm using a warm blue for the background. So it's like an ultramarine blue and that's going to kind of capture the sky. One of the things I really love about cherry blossom season here in Nashville is you get that juxtaposition of the really clear, beautiful blue sky and then you get the warm white light pink cherry blossoms against the sky and uh, since that's a sight so many of us are going to miss this year it was really important to me to capture that in edigame form So one of the things about edagame and edagame paper that kind of differs from Western watercolor paper is generally edagame paper now, and it does vary in this, but it's intended to be really bleedy. The colors really spread out. They really feather out. So that's why you may see in terms of edagame postcards, if you Google them, you may see these sort of white borders, these white outlines where the artist was just kind of trying to control the bleed. The amount of bleed is used to it's really used to great effect in well done edagame um, you can use water to just push colors way 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 out you can also use um, do very soft diffuse wet into wet blends and it really the amount of water you use on your brush really really changes how it handles so if you're used to Western style watercolor imagine it's like you're always working on wet paper and just kind of go with that in mind now you can get kind of stronger delineations through thicker mixes with less water but it is quite an adjustment from western style watercolor and that's one of the reasons i think people might find it more accessible is it's not intended to be as tight the materials list is a bit more limited also something i think is more accessible is with edagame you're really not supposed to mix your colors too too much that's why you'll get like the kuratake gensai tombi set that has like 45 colors for the most part you work with the colors that are already in your palette you might mix in a little bit of white so this is more like um, Chinese style watercolor where you're not really using a lot of water you're working much more thickly with the paint so those of you who are familiar with gouache it's more similar to gouache and in some of my other edagame videos in this series I do talk more in depth about edagame and gensai style paints and I also have some posts over on the blog that talk a little bit more about gensai style watercolor and gensai style paints but I think it's a fascinating topic and I think learning this art form and even learning like the different forms of Chinese watercolor can really bring a lot to your skill set so to me it's exciting and it offers a lot of innovation so if you're kind of bored with how sometimes stagnant western watercolor can sometimes feel this is a wonderful way to kind of move away from that so on the cherry blossoms i added in a very light wet wash of light pink and i'm just dabbing in a little bit of the more concentrated warm red in the centers and then allowing it to diffuse really beautifully into the rest of the flower While it's still wet, I'm also dabbing in some olive green just to kind of indicate that fresh sort of green color you get around the pollen and the stamens. So something else that's kind of beautiful about edagame is if you wanted, you could basically stop now and ink if you wish. It's entirely up to your discretion. Like so much of art, it's really up to the artist to decide when something is finished. And edagame is not meant to be this labor of four days, this labor of three weeks. It's meant to be 
just very short, very succinct and to the point. I talk about how much I enjoy these qualities in some of my other Edagame videos, how it kind of captures the spirit of what you're painting and it captures the seasonality. And for someone like me, spending this time painting Edagame really kind of allows me to stay more in the moment. And it also allows me to escape kind of what's going on in the outside world for just an hour in a way that's productive, beautiful, and safe at home. So for the leaves, I know that looks more like a neon yellow. It's actually a cool yellow, but it's not a neon. And then I'm brushing in a sap green wet into wet and allowing that to diffuse. And I'm leaving about half of the leaf still yellow. It's going to diffuse into that yellow, but it's also going to leave some of that yellow as a highlight. And Bowcat would like to tell you guys hi and also remind you guys that if you enjoy the work that I do here on YouTube, if you enjoy these tutorials, if you enjoy these videos, a wonderful way you can help ensure that I continue to share this kind of work is to join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. I'm also adding in just some green touches here and there on the stems of the blossoms. So you can kind of see that up in the l upper left. So after the pink centers of the flowers have had kind of a chance to dry, I go in and I dab some warmer yellow in. So just like with Western watercolor, if you're doing wet into wet, it's going to kind of diffuse and blend. If you do wet over dry, it's going to be more likely to hold that distinct detail. However, uh, edagame paper is interesting in that it can stay wet for a really, really long time. And as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, I'm not really a fan of using a hairdryer to dry my pieces for just a lot of different reasons. So one of the things I like about this is I enjoy um, kind of doing edagame while I'm doing other things generally. So this is like a good activity to do while I'm cooking dinner. In this instance, you can actually see my mom's kitchen table there. And in the background, she and I we're cooking a blue apron together. So if your workspace is smaller or you, if you have to constantly get up and do other things, edagame can be a good art form for that because not only is it quick, but it also invites stopping and taking breaks and allowing it to dry. So this could be a good activity for parents with kids who maybe have shorter attention spans because you can always come back to it later. I'm also just going in and adding some light shadows, some light definition with the light pink. So as it is, this is really pretty. If yours looks like this, this could be a good time to stop. That's one of the wonderful things about watercolor is it's really up to you when you decide to stop. So I know I showed you guys the pigment brush pin. It's a little bit of a deception. I was going to ink. In fact, actually, no, I guess I did. That was a different video where I show the brush pin and then I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to do more shadows. But I decided to keep this one light and airy. In fact, when I showed this to Joseph, he said it looks a lot like the art in Okami, which, of course, I took as a compliment. In fact, um, I gave him and my mom first choice of which of the postcards they'd like to keep for themselves. And this is the one he picked. So I guess I'll be seeing this one around. So one of the things I really like about the Pintel Pigment Brush Pen, there's actually a lot of things I like. And if you guys watch my channel, you've seen me use these during Inktober. You see me use these in various other videos. But um, what I like about the Extra Fine is the brush tip genuinely handles very similarly to a traditional brush. Not quite the same as a brush, but it's got a lot of the same flex, a lot of the same nuance, a lot of the same give. And it also offers this really beautiful dry brush effect, which I feel is really flattering on these Etagon postcards. That's an effect I definitely enjoy having. Um, it's also got pigment ink inside, which means it's waterproof once it's dry. So if you enjoy watercolor, if you want to go back and add more details, this is going to be a water safe ink for you. Pintel also makes dye-based brush pens. Like I said way earlier in the video, I'm going to link all the things I used or close equivalents down in the description below. This is one, if you want to make sure you use a pigment based ink if you plan on watercoloring on top of it. If you have zero intention of watercoloring on top of it, you can use any brush pin you like and you may even decide to use dye based brush pins that have like really beautiful translucent colors. And you can also use those dye based brush pins for watercolor art and I do have some tutorials on that here on the channel as well.
So inking this, I really try to keep kind of a loose, sketchier, more organic outline. It's not necessarily as rendered as you would get in like a pen and ink watercolor botanical study. Like those of you who are used to Western style botanical illustrations might be familiar with. That's another thing I actually really, really love about Edagame is this is just so user friendly. It's just so accessible compared to some of the other watercolor art. It's so much more approachable. And I just really love that because it really makes it easier for people to get into, particularly people who don't necessarily think of themselves as artists. And Bowie is insisting that I acknowledge his presence. So <laughs> I'm petting him while I'm talking about this. It's funny because he really doesn't like being on camera. I'd love to show him you guys or show you him something, some wording. Anyway, I'm also adding in just a few extra branches using just straight black from the pen, just breaking up the space a little bit more and adding more detail. But we would also like me to remind you guys that if you support me on Patreon, some of those funds do go to paying for his Nutro wet food. So he does appreciate your support. So after I've inked it, I'm going to use some white gouache just to add some details. This is not necessary. If you're using like the Kuratake uh, Gensai Tombi watercolor set, they do have a white that works well for this. I'm not as hot on the white in the Mozart Como Rebi, so I'm just using some white gouache. You can use white acrylic if that's what you have access to, or you don't have to go back in and add white highlights at all. And I'm using a really small Menso style brush. So this is like a weasel hair brush with um, a very small fine tip. It could be, it's often used as for like Gongbi style watercolor to add really fine uh, inked lines, but I'm using it just to add a little bit of white highlight to my edagame postcard and I'm also using it to add some white to the pollen of the flowers just to make it kind of stand out and a little more distinct. So we're just about finished with this edagame postcard. We just need to remove it gently from its chipboard backing and that's really simply done. I'll show you guys. So you're just going to kind of lift it up and then very carefully peel off the tape. Sometimes it'll tear just a little bit. That's why you just want to be kind of careful and slow as you're removing it. So edagame is actually designed not to be kept. Of course, you can keep it if you love it, but it's designed to be sent to someone else. It is a beautiful way to share something from your heart. Some of us are not so into like writing heartfelt sentiments. And in my opinion, creating a piece of art, even if it's not the most beautiful or the most refined piece of art, is much more meaningful to me personally than just writing a sen sentiment I found online. So to me, edagame is this really wonderful, beautiful, handmade way to show somebody how much you care. The time that you spend, the selection of subject matter, the fact that you're actually drawing it yourself, you're putting yourself at some risk for judgment. All of that is just so meaningful to me. Now, true edagame does generally have a small hand lettered saying on the front. My handwriting is atrocious. And as I said, I'm not super fond of trite sentiments. So I opt to let the subject matter just speak for itself on the front of the postcard. And then I intend to write a heartfelt message on the other side. But these can be a wonderful way to show people how much you care and that you're thinking of them now or at any time. And they're a beautiful way to also kind of capture the beauty of the season and reflect on what makes that season special and wonderful. So I have loads of other edagame tutorials here on the channel, as well as other watercolor tutorials, and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys!